once you know what it is that you want to do, mm-hmm. just put it into action, you know, mm-hmm. and then every step that you take should lead you closer to your goal. So I knew I wanted to share stories. I knew I had to figure out how to make films in order to share these stories. So I just taught myself how to do it. I put an ad in Craigslist. I hired a DP. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> and um, literally shot a, a, a short film in the elevator of Nike women at the Grove. <laughs> You're listening to Creative Breakthrough, the podcast that provides you with the strategies to elevate your creative passion to the next level. I'm your host, creative hustler, and chicken wing lover, Shireen Kassam, a.k.a. The Funny Brown Girl. And yes... I have an unhealthy obsession with chicken wings. Now, get ready to flex your creative muscle and keep winning. Welcome to the Creative Breakthrough. I am your host, Shireen Kassam, aka The Funny Brown Girl. Hey, if you're a new listener, welcome to this podcast. If you're one of my OG listeners, I can't thank you enough for tuning in week after week and showing your support Hey, quick promo plug. If you are on your phone right now on your mobile device, hit that share button. If you're on Apple or Spotify or Google, hit that share button. Share this with a friend or family member that you think will like this podcast. Share it to a WhatsApp group. Post it on your social media. Tag me if you want to. I'm at Funny Brown Girl on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So please, please, please share the love because that's how we get found and discovered. Also, if you're on Facebook, join our creative community. Just search Creative Breakthrough Community. In there, you're going to find a lot of free resources, webinars, past episodes, just a lot of resources and opportunities to help you grow in your creative journey. For example, Nickelodeon right now, their application is open if you want to be a children's TV writer. So definitely check out that group if you want to be on the know and know about what is happening in the creative space. Again, just go to Facebook and search Creative Breakthrough Community. Okay, I want to jump right into today's interview, but I've got four announcements before we get started. Number one, this week we are trending, this podcast is trending in Hong Kong, Malaysia, Nigeria, Uganda, and the United Arab Emirates. You guys, this is amazing. To all you new listeners, welcome to this podcast. I am so happy to have you here. If you haven't already, please leave a review. That is how we get discovered. So please, 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 if you're on Apple right now, if you're using Apple um, iTunes or whatever we call it now, Apple Podcasts, leave a review. Number two, thank you to everyone who has reached out to me to share your side hustles. It has been amazing to hear your journeys, to hear what you've come up with during this COVID pandemic. And I just love the engagement. And I love that these episodes are helping you create that side hustle and figure out how to take it to the next level. I'm excited about next or in two weeks when we do episode three of the side hustle series. So please tune in. If you have any questions or concerns before then that I have not addressed, please let me know because I'm sure other people have those same questions and I can address them for everybody um, in a couple of weeks. Also, a few of you asked me if you could have an accountability partner, and I totally am up for accountability partners. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to set you guys up with each other. So what I would highly encourage you to do is join the Facebook group, again, Creative Breakthrough Community, and then introduce yourselves on there. Tell us who you are, what you do, and why you're looking for an accountability partner. And then if somebody looks interesting to you or intrigues you, connect with that person and let's make magic, you guys. Let's make magic. Okay. Third announcement. I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, but I have started a new podcast in addition to this podcast. So we will continue to do this podcast, but now I have another one called Radio Rejects. It's me and a buddy of mine. He used to be on ESPN as a radio host. I used to be on morning talk show and now we're not, hence the name Radio Rejects. And we talk about our experiences and it's a lot more about pop culture on this podcast. We go live on Facebook every other Sunday so you can actually see us. It's a very visual podcast. And so join our Facebook group. Facebook group is Radio Rejects Live. And then once you're in there, you'll get alerts when we go live on Sundays and you can check us out. We also have the replays of our past two episodes on there too. So if you want to check them out, feel free. I eat chicken wings in both those episodes so you can actually see my addiction and love for chicken wings up close and personal. And number four, lastly, I have big news. 
On December 11th, I am going to be the keynote speaker at a virtual event called Unstoppable. The focus of the event is to leave the heaviness of 2020 behind you and enter 2021 feeling recharged and refreshed. And I am honored that I get to be the keynote speaker for this event. If you want more information on this event, check out my Instagram at funny brown girl or go on LinkedIn and find me Shireen Kassam and you'll get more details. Okay, let's get to today's special guest. Nia Malika Dixon is an award-winning filmmaker on a mission to amplify diverse stories from underrepresented communities authentically in Hollywood, especially the voices of Black Muslim women. With over 15 years in the film industry, this Baltimore native hones her craft as the founder of Adaz Entertainment, where she writes, directs, and produces content for television, film, and digital platforms, specifically highlighting stories representing Black Muslim women and girls. Dixon creates work to cultivate deeper cultural understanding and connections in our local and global communities. Next week on December 13th, Nia Dixon will be producing the third annual Black Muslim Girl Fly Film Festival, dedicated to amplifying the cinematic works of both established and emerging Black Muslim women, filmmakers and creative talent exploring diverse and underrepresented stories of the African diaspora across film, TV, and digital platforms around the world. The BMG Fly Festival program highlights include a diverse panel of film industry professionals, including producers, writers, actors, and musical performances. Key panelists include writers, directors, and producers from Dear White People, Jin, and The Blacklist. The festival will be held virtually this year at seedandspark.com forward slash BMG Fly Fest. Don't worry, I'm going to put all the details in the show notes. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Welcome to the guest chair, Nia. Well, thank you. I'm honored to be here. Well, I can't wait. This is going to be exciting. Um, you've got a, you've got a lot happening in the next month or two, so this is going to be exciting to talk about what you've got coming up. One of the first questions I love starting with, though, is how did you start your creative journey? When did it start? Where did it start? And how did it start? Well, awesome. Well, um, honestly, everybody has an origin story, right? And yes. um, I'm a big fan of origin stories. And my origin story started with my mother. So um, the woman who put a book in my hand, introduced me to the public library. Um, and I fell in love with stories. And that's where my journey started. Um, professionally, however, it wasn't until much later in life. And um, when I decided to move to Los Angeles back in 2005, and that was the beginning. And initially, the impetus was that there were these stories on television and in film that just did not reflect me or people who looked like me. And I just felt like as a writer, as a storyteller myself, why can't I be the one to bring those stories here? And so that was what brought me to L.A. Awesome. Love it. So I want to know more about moving to LA. So you were living, was it Baltimore in Maryland? Yes. Were? And then yes. you transitioned to LA. Talk to us about making that move. Like I, for a lot of creatives, they know they have to go to LA or they think they have to go to LA, but it, it's a, it's a daunting idea to do that, to uproot yourself and move to this big city of lights. And like, can you get discovered and can you get found? Talk to us a little bit about like how you planned for that move and like financially and mentally and then how it was when you actually got to LA. So initially, um, the idea came from a cousin. I have a cousin who's already in the industry and um, she had given me a book as a gift uh, called Story. And that's when I fell in love with the whole format of film and television. Um, and then a year later, was when I found myself in LA. So the process was just me just deciding, well, I know this is what I want to do, but I mean, is it realistic? So I had a conversation with my mother, my best friend, and she's the person who is the smartest. Like, I don't know anybody smarter than her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think all mothers, I don't know where they get it from, what vitamins they take. <laughs> I don't know, but she told me, she said, Nia, uh, if this is what you want to do, then just do it. And so 
I mean, it was like a light switch. I really did not have to ask permission. Like I did not arrive in Los Angeles with the um, I need to ask permission attitude because that's just not how I was raised. My mom was like, this is what you want to do, then do it. Mm -hmm. And so I just cashed out my 401k and I caught a flight to Los Angeles and asked my cousin if I could crash on her couch. And that was the beginning. And then from there, I just self-taught, you know, um, like I said, I lived in libraries as a kid. So that was the first place I went. And it was so funny because my cousin asked me, like, you read a lot of books, don't you? <laughs> and I said, well, yeah. And so I just learned everything that I, I needed to know about screenwriting. Um, I even signed up for screenwriting courses at UCLA. And that was the beginning, you know, and as long as you have the idea that you can do something and you don't have the doubt, it's possible. You can do it. I love that. I love that. So you started. So when you got to L.A., you hadn't created anything at that point, like films or web series or anything. Oh, no, no, I hadn't even written a script. I, I had no idea what I was doing. I just thought, I know I want to bring stories to L.A. And so let me catch a plane and get there. And and can, I, can I ask how, like, approximately how old were you? You don't have to tell me your age, but you're <laughs> like the, like the, what's the, the window of time? Are we talking here? <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, just to let you know, I am 46 this year. You do not look 46. -uh. <laughs> so this was literally like uh, 15 years ago. Okay. So 30, 31. Okay. Yep. So that's a, that, I mean, that's still pretty like, that's a decent age because a lot of people think that if they haven't moved there in their twenties yet, it's too late. Oh no. There, you know what, this is a piece of advice that, um, that will carry you for the rest of your life. It's never too late. Love it. So talk to us about those 15 years in LA. So you, you went there, you cashed out your 401k. Did you have to get a job or did you just kind of hustle and make things work out? And what was your first break and how did that happen? So first of all, I do want to say this, always move with purpose. Like that's my mantra. I've always had that um, growing up. And just because my name is Nia, uh, literally um, that was my mantra, Nia, you have a purpose. So if you move with purpose and you know exactly what it is that you're headed toward, then you're already on the right track. So that's really what I was going with, just going with purpose. I knew I wanted to share these stories. And so that's what I did. Um, I did have to get a job cause I had to, you know, you've got to find your own place to live. I can't mm -hmm. crush on my cousin's couch for the rest <laughs> of my life. Come on. Um, so I got a job. I was working at the mall. <laughs> and that's where I shot my first short film. Wow, that's awesome. And how long had you been in uh, LA when that happened? Oh, it was only about maybe six months. Wow, that's quick. Okay. Okay, so yeah. you hustled, you moved, you, you learned it quickly. Yeah, once you know what it is that you want to do, mm -hmm. just put it into action, you know, mm -hmm. and then every step that you take should lead you closer to your goal. So I knew I wanted to share stories. I knew I had to figure out how to make films in order to share these stories. So I just taught myself how to do it. I put an ad in Craigslist. I hired a DP. I had no idea what I was doing <laughs> and um, literally shot a, a, a short film in the elevator of Nike women at the Grove. <laughs> that is so cool. That is awesome. That is awesome. So how did you go about even um, like I'm guessing that you didn't have a lot of budget. So how did you even figure out how to get everything done on such a small budget? Well, here's the thing. Um, when it comes to filmmaking, I really like to use common sense. And, you know, like my mom says, common sense is usually not that common. But if you do like use that as your default, you really can't fail. And so what I did was I just thought, I know I need this. I know I, I need somebody who can shoot. I've never done that before. So let me hire somebody who knows how to do it. Mm -hmm. You should already have their camera. So I don't have to worry about figuring out how to buy the right camera. So everything I did, I just made sure I did it like the common sense way. Mm -hmm. I knew I didn't know how to shoot. Then I needed to hire somebody who knew how to do it, which I did. I didn't know anything about sound. So I hired a sound person, you know, so once you know what it is that um, is expected of you, fill in the blanks as best as you can with the tools you have. Right. And I think that's uh, good advice for any creative, like no matter what you're trying to do, there's always somebody who can 
who knows how to do it faster and quicker and better than you. So outsource it or hire their side hustle to help you do your side hustle. Right. Right. And I didn't even know that I wanted to be a director. All mm-hmm. I knew was I had these stories. I'm a writer that mm-hmm. I've been a writer since I was like four years old. So once I was on set and like in the moment of learning how to direct, that was the moment that I realized, Oh, I need to direct. I'm good at this. I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm just learning, but these actors seem to think I know what I'm doing and they keep saying that. So, Hey, let's go with this. And sometimes you've got to like step into a role before you figure out that that's the role you need to be in. And that's what happened. That's how I realized I wanted to be a director as well as a writer. Now you have your own entertainment company. Talk to us about how that came about and why you decided to start your own entertainment company. So uh, necessity is the mother of invention, as that saying goes. Um, as, as you can tell, I'm, I'm showing my age here. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I had all these great ideas. I had written a script at this point. Um, but nobody wanted to shoot my, my film, you know. And so I had to decide, all right, so I have this great script. I had even joined a writer's group. So my cousin had introduced me to this wonderful gentleman who had um, started a writer's group. And actually several of those writers who I was in that writer's group with, they are actually on television right now. They're producers and writers. And I think that is really awesome. Very cool. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So shout out to your community. (laughs) So keep that in mind. So I joined a writer's group and that's how I learned that, you know, my writing was great. You don't know your writing is great until somebody else lets you know. If someone reads it and they let you know, then you know you're on the right track. If not, then you should sign up for courses, which is what I did prior to the writer's group. And that's how I knew I did not need to be in that course. The instructor (laughs) actually told me, you don't need to be here. Your script is ready to be shot. And so that's why I started my own production company, because I had the script. I had like the wherewithal to do it. I just didn't have the right production company to take the project and say, hey, we love this idea. Let's shoot it. So I Mm -hmm. just started my own and, and that's how I shot my first project. Wow. I love that. That's so inspiring. And now I know a lot of people would say, but wait a minute, like where, how do you even do that? How do you create your own production company? Like where did you get the funding and the, and the people and just the, just even after you create a a, a entertainment company and you produced it yourself, like how do you even get it out into the world? Wow. It's, it's really a process. And actually I started teaching um, workshops back in 2016. I created um, actually a curriculum called create your own content. And I taught several workshops in person um, in Los Angeles that year. And I'm just drawing on my experience as an educator. So um, I've been an educator for over 25 years. And so I thought, okay, I know how to do it. Let me show people how to do it. And then some of those people, they said, hey, let's do this together. Mm -hmm. And so then we created something together. So like sometimes when you pull your community together and you say, hey, I have something to share, they also have something to share. And then you come together and you create something bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's usually how great things happen. And that's, that's how my production company came to be. You know, I had this idea. And then I asked several people, hey, you're really great at this. Would you join me in shooting that? And they were like, sure. It's really a process of taking the things that you already have and making the most of them. Mm -hmm. And now you've got this awesome film festival coming up in less than a month. Um, The Muslim Girl Fly Film Festival, which I'm assuming came about because of this idea of building a community around Black Muslim women. So talk to us about... I'd just I'd love to hear more about you being a black Muslim living in LA trying to get your stories heard I mean you you're wearing it for the people who are listening to the audio and not watching the video you have a head wrap on um, a hijab Um, talk to us just about like how people react to that I want to talk about the first festival and we're going to get to that but like just talk about being Muslim in the in the industry in the LA industry or even just the film industry in general well you know that's also part of the reason why I started my own production company you know 
Um, and people used to ask me why. And I thought that's interesting. Why wouldn't I? Mm-hmm. Because there were so many black Muslim stories that need to be told that just weren't getting attention. So I took so many meetings. So um, my writing is great. And I'm not just saying that because I'm, I love my writing. Um, <laughs> but I know it's great, like I said, because I was in this writer's group. And you know, once you build that community, sometimes you make connections and people can get you into those rooms. So I've taken meetings um, at HBO and I've had people actually love the stuff that I wrote, however they wanted to change it. And because it wasn't um, quote unquote mainstream enough, they would say, well, take out some of the Muslimy parts mm-hmm. or is this a black story or is it a Muslim story? But I grew up black and Muslim in America. I was born in 1974 in Baltimore, Maryland. I went to Muslim school. I went to a, a masjid all my life in Baltimore. That's the life I know. I don't know anything other than black and Muslim in America. So for them to say, well, separate these, it's not the same story. And so that's why I created the platform Black Muslim Girl Fly because it's inextricable. We're black, we're Muslim, and we're fly. And we have great stories. And so that's why the MG Fly Festival exists. So tell us a little bit more about the festival. It's on December 13th, right? Yes, ma'am, on December 13th this year. And um, this is our third year. And because of COVID, we are totally online and we've partnered with Seed and Spark this year, which is amazing. I love them. Um, They are also a crowdfunding platform and a distribution platform for individual, I'm sorry, for independent filmmakers. And the great thing about Seed and Spark is that they connect filmmakers directly with their audience, cutting out the middleman, and I love it. And so... This year through Seed and Spark, we are going to be online. Um, We have web series. We are also accepting screenplays. We have short films, narratives, features. Um, We've had animated films submitted. We've had um, musical. We had a black Muslim girl story that was a musical. Come on. That's awesome. Have you That's going to be there on the 13th? No, and that was our first year. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just giving you an idea of all of the different kinds of stories that Black Muslim people have to share that are just not being explored on those quote unquote mainstream platforms, which mm-hmm. is why BMG Fly Film Fla- Festival exists. You can find us on filmfreeway.com. We are exclusively on Film Freeway for submissions. And, um, yeah, if you'd have any more questions about it, um, please feel free to give us um, an email at audas.entertainment at gmail.com. Cool, and I'll put that in the show notes for people as well. But you also have a really awesome line of panelists that are coming to speak. Like I was, I was, I was like, oh my God, you've got, you have the hookup, girl. You like know people. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It goes back to building your community. And mm-hmm. I love these people and I'm honored to say that they love me. Um, um, Effie Brown, she's amazing. She's a powerful black woman who is just brilliant. And she was on our panel last year. And this year she is a judge. Um, we also have Fanchon Cox, who is also another brilliant woman. And she is just amazing. Um, she's from Pearl Street Films. She also has a one woman show called One Drop. And um, who else? We have on our panel this year, Najla Mutman. I am so honored to say that we are honoring Najla with the, tra- the Trailblazer Award this year um, because of her groundbreaking film, Jin, and because of all of the work she's doing in Hollywood. She's directing Queen Sugar. She's just out there mm-hmm. and making all of us proud. So yeah, She's um, really blown up. She, I remember when I was following her on Twitter and then all of a sudden she went from having like a couple thousand to just like killing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know what? Honestly, I just want to shout out more Black Muslim women filmmakers out there. Um, we've got Malika Shabazz. She's on the panel. She's one of our original filmmakers from 2018. Um, we're also having a panel partnering up with Black Film Space. And one of our winners from last year, Jaka Suare, um, who won for her short film, 
Um, and she will be on a panel with us as well. So I'm really excited. We've got a lot going on. You do. And I, and I'm, and his name is slipping my mind, but the guy from Blacklist is going to be on the panel too, right? Yes. Hisham Taufik is one of yes. our judges. He's always been our judge each year. And I want to just give a special shout out to him because that brother is just always holding it down for us. And we really appreciate him. He also starred in Jen, in case you didn't know, and you no, can watch that on Amazon Prime. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I was always wondering where I could check that out. So that's cool. I'll definitely check him out. Uh, oh, out but. Before I go, I do want to say we have a very special musical guest this year. And I haven't announced it yet. But I do want to announce it here. Because she's so amazing. And you may know her on Instagram as Amira Unplugged. But she is a black Muslim woman hijabi. She's a singer and a poet. And she's really kicking butt right now. She's amazing. And she's going to be our performer this year. So. Oh, wow. Yay. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that with our listeners. That'll be awesome. Well, I'll definitely be tuning in on December 13th because I'm really excited to hear all those panelists and, uh, and, and see the musical act too. So now I, circling back, because you, you've dropped so much knowledge on us, like what advice, so say someone, there's a black Muslim girl listening to this podcast right now. And she's like, I want to do, I want to, I want to be a film producer, or I want to be, I want to be an actress in front of the camera, or I want to be a comedian or a singer. Like what advice would you have to her? If, if you were to give your younger self advice going back in time? Oh, take courses, study, observe, experience, work on people's sets. You know, I, that's how I got the experience. One of my most favorite experiences was working on Ryan Coogler's thesis film. So oh, it's wow. like, you know what? You just throw yourself into whatever position that you can find and just do those um, to the best that you can. And always pay attention. Always pay attention. Um, yeah, that's, that's how you do it. And what would you say to someone, like, especially a young Muslim woman who, who wears a hijab, perhaps, or just being Muslim and has certain values and ethics that they obviously feel like sometimes if you go to LA or go in an entertainment industry, like your parents sometimes have these, I don't know where they get these ideas from or what's actually happening in the industry. But oh, I you, know. What would you say to them in terms of like, I'm because I'm sure you've gone through your own challenges and obstacles. Um, what would you say, what advice would you give to someone who looks different or has a different religion and from the mainstream and how to, how to kind of value themselves? Well, I'll say this, you know, as a black woman, I've experienced racism my entire life. So it's not something that's surprising. Um, and as a Muslim, I've experienced Islamophobia my whole life. Mm -hmm. So it's not surprising. So my advice, and this is what I took to heart is um, I ignore that. It's not, you know, I, I lost a job when I first got to LA. Uh, I was working at, um, I won't name the place, but I was working at this place and I was wearing my scarf. And one day they told me, you know, we'd prefer it if you didn't wear that. And um, when I told them, no, it's for religious reasons, the next day I got a call saying they didn't need me anymore. Um, and you know what? I didn't get upset about it. I wasn't, you know, a lot of people are like, well, you could have sued them. Mm -hmm. I don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. Right. I learned from the experience and then I just kept it moving. Mm -hmm. And then if you pay attention on your journey, you're going to interact with people like that along the way. And then you're going to re interact with those same people because yep. this place is small. So just maintain your grace and do the best you can with what you have and just keep it moving. Mm -hmm. I love that. The keep it moving. I actually talk about that a lot in my podcast because as a Muslim woman too, I feel like I've, I've lost opportunities a lot because they find out I'm Muslim mm -hmm. and people are like, oh, you should sue and you have grounds. To, and I'm like, I have so many other things to be hustling for. I, I don't need to get caught up in a court case about this. Like, right. Cause it's going to happen again and again and again. And all I can do is get stronger from it and realize the next time it happens to get out of the situation quicker and keep it moving. Yep. So I love That's it. Exactly. Right. And always educate yourself. Google is your friend. Mm -hmm. And when you say that educate yourself about other people and their, and their religions and backgrounds or just yourself. 
just educate yourself about every situation that you're about to put yourself into. So Mm -hmm. for example, if you're going to a networking event, educate yourself about what the event is about, who's going to be there, what are the most important issues that you need to be aware of, because if you get into a conversation, you need to be prepared, no matter where you are, educate yourself. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. So before we jump into the lightning round, is there any last piece of advice you'd like to give our listeners? Join a community. And, and I say that with two reasons. One, because it's true. You definitely do need a community. And two, I'm building a community. So inshallah, next year, we will have an official launch for our BMG Fly Network. Um, Right now, it's very small and intimate and very private. Um, But we're planning to launch next year. And the purpose is to provide a safe space, a place of community for Black Muslim creatives, professionals, specifically women. I love it. I love it. Will you make room for brown Muslim women too? Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Because there's not a lot of us either. I need to start. I need to start mobilizing the forces, I think. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's jump into the lightning round. The lightning round, I'm going to ask you six questions, rapid fire, and you just tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Take your time. What's your definition of success? Well, it depends. So if you're talking about earthly success, <laughs> if I've accomplished my own personal set goals, if you're talking about Akira success, it's Jenna. And do you want to explain a little bit more what that means to our non-Muslim listeners? Yes. So um, afterlife success to me is pleasing my creator enough to make it into those pearly gates to get to heaven. (laughs) Don't we all wish we could just make (laughs) sure that happens. (laughs) What's the one thing you wish you knew before embarking on your creative journey? I don't know if I should say that. (laughs) Well, hmm. The one thing that I wish I had known is that everybody is just as insecure as I am. (laughs) Isn't that so true? I feel like people don't understand how insecure people in the entertainment industry are. Yeah, some of them more so, but I'm not going to say anything else. (laughs) That's okay, guys. I will talk about it. I talk about it a lot. (laughs) Uh, Who inspires you and why? Oh, that's easy. It's my mom. She is the most brilliant woman I've known in my entire life, and she still is. She works hard, and yeah, she's my hero. Everything that she does, it inspires me. What's a habit that's helped you on your journey? Prayer. My prayer keeps me focused. Mm -hmm. And what do you want your legacy to be? Well, that's a complex question. (laughs) So... Two things. My legacy on on this earth, my earthly legacy, is that um, the BMG fly continues because I created it to empower Black Muslim women. And it has really, it's beyond me. So that's what I wish for my earthly legacy and my children and their children to thrive and and always thrive. Um, Yeah. My other legacy, the one that I'm taking with me to the afterlife, is all the good deeds and all the things that I think are pleasing to my creator. Being kind, being patient, being giving, and um, showing grace and mercy. Awesome. Nia, if our listeners wanted to find you online, where could they find you? I am always on Twitter, unfortunately, (laughs) Um, at my name. N-I-A-M-A-L-I-K-A-D-I-X-O-N. Um, and then, of course, our website at audacentertainment.com, A-U-D-A-Z, entertainment.com. And if they wanted to find more, learn more about the festival coming up? Oh, great. You know what? You can even watch some of the films from previous years at bmgflyfest.vhx.tv. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Nia. This was awesome. Thank you for dropping all those gems of knowledge on us. Any last bits of advice, words of wisdom? I just want to say thank you and um, give you 
all the props because you creating this platform is amazing and everybody out there listening is blessed by having this. So thank you for having me and um, yeah, stay blessed. Thank you. I appreciate it. Wow. What a great conversation, y'all. Even if you're not interested in being a film producer or director or even moving to LA, Nia just dropped so much knowledge about how to be successful in your creative journey, how to take risks, how to be focused, how to go and accomplish your dreams and goals. So what are the key takeaways? One, move with purpose. Two, hire people to help you. Three, find a community. Again, Shameless plug, but join the Facebook group. Just search Creative Breakthrough Community. Four, throw yourself into situations and learn. And five, attend the Black Muslim Girl Fly Film Festival on December 13th. All that information in the show notes. Now, go flex your creative muscle and keep winning. Thanks for listening. Stay connected about upcoming resources, including opportunities, festivals, competitions, and grants to help you grow your creative passion by subscribing to my bi-monthly newsletter by visiting funnybrowngirl.com forward slash subscribe. Don't miss out on a life-changing opportunity and subscribe today at funnybrowngirl.com forward slash subscribe. And hey, if you decide to go on Instagram today, follow me. I'm Funny Brown Girl. I'm Shereen Kassam, and you've been listening to Creative Breakthrough. Now, go flex your creative muscle and keep winning.